That's cool. Oh, and the thing that says live. Hello, Melbourne. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Edinburgh. I'm Gemma Neville. And I'm Vicky Adams, and we are the two emerging writers from Edinburgh City of Literature who will be taking you on a whistle stop tour of some of our favourite literary haunts. Uh, for us, it's this morning. Um, for you guys um, across the other side of the world, I believe it's the evening, and you should all have beers in hand, and we've just had our coffees. Yeah. So, yeah. Cheers with yeah. a cup of tea. I recommend the chai tea in the Looking Glass Bookshop, where we are just now, yeah. which is um, smack bang in the heart of Edinburgh's literary quarter in the old town of Edinburgh, on the edge of Middle Meadow Walk, for those of you who've been here. And the first thing we want to say, I think, as we start off, is that there's so many wonderful things going on here that we can't represent all of them. Um, so we're going to start off with a poem that Gemma's written that is a love letter to Leith, um, which many of you will know from books like Erwin Welsh's Train Spotting, and is a, a whole different underside of Edinburgh. That's right, say. yeah. So we're going to be mostly in the old town of Edinburgh on this tour. Um, but yeah, Edinburgh's got many hidden parts. Um, do tell us some of your own favourites on the um, Twitter stream. It's hashtag, hashtag DWF15. Right? That's correct. Is that right? Yep. Sarah from the City of Literature office in Edinburgh will be responding to those alongside us as and when we can on our march. So without further ado, here's a few lines from okay. me. I'm just going to switch the camera around, Gemma. <laughs> We need to know that uh, Leith is the port by the sea in Edinburgh and it's got the motto persevere. The sun spots in here, so um, enjoy, enjoy that language a bit. Okay, Smells of the sea, but all I can see. The view from the bus number 22, ways we learn to tolerate the rates, but never hate one another. Side by side, doing the walk at the top. Belting out the sunshine last night over the forest. Crafted beard, the bard, beards. You're looking up in Oval on Constitution Street. Beatrice, Mary Moriarty, Tony and Ica, Mr. Bishop. I'm passing through, but I'm not staying long. You understand. Well, the night, city shadow and hard tenements. You've seen it all before and will again. Smell of the sea, all I can see is a thick disappointment of an East Coast har. Seagulls, surly, darkling darlings, and pterodactyls picking. At the ghost of tram tracks, old bones, and second hand nostalgia. Gates of the Kirk, key to the dockside, shoreside, your wee bit of underside. Order to go, Carino's chip shop. Salt and sauce, dubs and drugs. Banana flats, pack and shawl. Pick me in, in deep. Drop ship, we curse and move west for other stories. Stories from bakery, open all hours. See, I kind of decipher your thick skin and the thin page in which I write. I love Sam, please. Coral, Thank you, Gemma. And we're going to persevere with our tour. Um, so we're currently in Looking Glass Books, which is a gorgeous little independent bookstore in Edinburgh. They have a writer in residence here. They have a very regular series of book readings and launches. It's a lovely place. And this is one of over 50 shops in Edinburgh, is that right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, quite a few intended ones. Yeah. Like Word Power Books, yeah. Elvis and Shakespeare and the Talk. Yeah. And talking of writers in cafes, we just so happened to come across uh, Joshua Turner, who is an emerging short story writer living in Edinburgh. Um, I believe you can read one of Josh's short stories in the September issue of the Irish Literary Review. And, and do you have anything you'd like to tell us about Edinburgh, yes, Josh? Yes, uh, obviously you're sitting in a bookshop just now, one of 50 that sit around Edinburgh. And the uh, first book to actually be published and printed in Scotland was in Edinburgh in 1508. So a good place to start your tour. Fantastic. And what do you like most about being a writer in Edinburgh? How pretty the city is. If you ever want a break, if you ever get that moment where you really want to keep writing, but, you know, you need 10 minutes to yourself, you just walk through the streets to see everything and hear about the feel inspired. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Josh. We will let you get back to your book. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right, and thank you very much, Looking Glass Books, for having us this morning. And we are now out onto the streets. Oh, it's a chilly February morning here in Edinburgh. We're this all rubbed off, but we're not taking care of now. So come on, let's show you some of the city. Um, quite loud here. We've got a bit of construction work, so we'll walk quickly along the street. This is Quarter Mile, um, which used to be the site of the old hospital in Edinburgh, now cafes, flats, um, and we're coming up to Edinburgh University. 
<clears throat> we both studied. Um, I studied at I studied at St Andrews, um, but I used to be a writer in residence at the School of Informatics in Edinburgh, um, which stands on the site of an old bookstore where the copy of Lady Chatterley's Lover, that was then burnt on the pavement outside, was bought, um, kicking off that. yeah, kicking off the whole um, big trial back in the. Oh, I can't remember now, 1950s was it? Um, with Penguin, um, which was all about censorship and so forth and was a huge landmark for the publishing industry. And looking back to our right, uh, this is Middle Meadow Walk, which Meadows. leads onto the meadows, which is um, featured in many fantastic um, publications. Miss Jean Brody, Miss yep. Spark. That's right. Um, and in fact, those of you who are following up, who are following us on Twitter, I tweeted um, a picture of um, a Muriel Spark quotation um, earlier on, about right, half an hour um, ago. The censorship in the books. I mean, that just sums yeah. up Edinburgh so full of contradictions, isn't mm -hmm. it? So it's it's um, one of those cities that you've really got to get under the skin of, I think. And mm -hmm. um, this will be 20 minutes. Won't do it justice. But do yeah. uh, chip in on Twitter with um, some of your own mm -hmm. favourites. Um, I come and see for yourself. Yeah. Come and come and visit. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, Edinburgh was um, is supposed to have been the inspiration for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's right. Um, and it's yeah, the idea of the right. public face of Edinburgh and the private CD underbelly. We'll um, pass on the tour, won't we? We will. Yep. And um, Arthur mm -hmm. Conan Doyle's mm -hmm. stories, and yep. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Stevenson. It's, I mean, obviously, it's a city that's um, full of a lot of literary history and kind yes. of heavy antecedents. But what would you say, Gemma, do you like most about it as a contemporary writing city? Oh, I think um, the sort of urban drama of our skyline, mm -hmm. you know, with um, yes, all that history and the layers, and it's a city of many, many layers of the bridges and, mm -hmm. and seven hills. In fact, we're going uphill right now, but this is not one of the hills. <laughs> it just feels like it should be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think all of that creates, um, you know, frames maybe the atmosphere mm -hmm. for, for spoken word in particular, as well yeah. as written word. And, um, yeah, we're not going to get a chance to see some of the things mm -hmm. we want to in the evenings, you know. Um, yeah, this is our breakfast tour, really. That's right. There's a lot of performance poetry. I love what Jenny mm -hmm. Lindsay is doing and mm -hmm. Valley and Broad, Rabbi yep. Winkle. Um, we're going to be yeah, showing you this the old town in this old UNESCO literary quarter. Yep. Um, yeah, so we're just getting to the top of the university now, looking ahead to Forest Road and um, the National Museum there, um, crossroads of Chambers Street and Forest Road. And I think I spy across the road our next visitor. So we'll get through the ah. traffic lights. And there we go. And I'm just going to hand the Let's camera over to Jen. Let's all around so we can see Vicky. Looking okay. good. Scott, your good side. Both sides. <laughs> Super. Okie dokes. And who are we going to meet on the other side of the street? Uh, we are going to run into Jane Alexander, um, who's debut novel, The Last Hope Month, is coming out with Saravan at the end of March, and I believe it will be launches for sure in Edinburgh, I believe also in Glasgow. One of the nice things about the Edinburgh that you've seen is there's a lot of support between the towns, and particularly within the, the publishing industry. Um, there's a lot of... Green music. man, safety first. <laughs> there's a lot of really good small independent books. Um, mm. Booksellers, retailers, but also um, publishers um, springing up in Edinburgh and further beyond. Good. So we've got places like Canongate, I think, is one of the larger independent. And yet, it's still so difficult for people to make a living out of writing. I don't think we should over romanticise that. Um, really tough to get something published. Yeah, so I'd say really good about the quality. It's really good quality. That's what people always try and get into sales. Really. Mm. Um, really good for age. But do you find that you feel that? Um, I mean, Twitter is a very um, democratic way of, of linking up, yeah. isn't it? It's because it's really flattens power things. structures and, and, and we can share like ideas. It's an advertising machine, I'm not really so sure, but it's a really nice way of talking to people. Um, I go to events in person, for example. Hi, Jane, Gemma, hello. hello. <laughs> My 
Super. We look forward to reading that. As we walk along, Jane is going to see a bit of an excerpt from a short story of hers um, that inspired by this section of Edinburgh. That's right. Okay. It's called Trombone Maker Row. And uh, I'm going to read a really short snippet from it. So um, I'm climbing now up Trombone Maker Row, past the high walls of the churchyard, past the odd assortment of shops, past the deadhead, the trans rail, and the tattoo parlour. My breath coming faster, my legs working harder as if I really am walking uphill. And when I reach the top of the street, I stop. Four floors up, that's us. They've made a tenement too tall, the roofs blurring into the stone coloured sky, so our flat's too distant from me, but it's the only one with a life on it. Lovely, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Fantastic. Happy writing, Jane. Gorgeous coat. I love this colour. It's super. Bye-bye. Bye. Okie -bye. Bye. dokes. Some fashion tips as well. Well, it is a wee bit of an overcast day, so I was just loving that raspberry red colour. Um, Edinburgh can be um, a bit victim to the northeast har. It can actually. It's been wonderful weather the last couple of days, so it's a pity it's so grey today. However, it does give us the opportunity to read this quote um, from Doctor Who, The Many Hands, by Dale Smith, where he says, it was a gloomy day in Edinburgh, but then, when well, wasn't it? Okay, here we go. And, and um, Vicky, what do you think makes a city of literature? I think it's got to be something to do with the past and something to do with the present. So, obviously, Edinburgh has so many wonderful literary traditions, um, and, and it's Beautifully, beautifully intertwined with the buildings and the people and the personality of the city. But it's about that continuing to be supported and continuing to be seen as part of it. I mean, things like, oh, I don't know, we've got Waverley Station. I mean, how many places have a train station that's named after a novelist? It sits next to the Scott Monument, which is the tallest monument to a single author in the world. Um, and yet, do you think? The Scots language and, and Gaelic language, do they get proper prominence in Edinburgh? Not particularly. It's never been a strongly Gaelic city yet. So many people but we'll see that. when we get up to Mackers Court later, we will yeah. see um, well, some. The history of Scotland, I think, yeah. well represented here. So, yeah. Um, and some lovely quotes there in the stonework oh, to really terms really the many languages in Scotland. Yeah, so it's right. also, um, it's a meeting of different nationalities. It's very international city, yeah. Um, I think part of that is the International Book Festival, of course. Of course. That is remarkable, a city of 400,000 that yeah. we should host such a festival. My yeah. granny talks about going to the very first um, gathering um, in, the, in, 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 yeah. a, in a, I think it was just in a, they held, first held in a flat in the West End when they were yeah. starting, thinking that um, the book festival. And now, of course, it's the largest in the world of its kind, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so here we are, Candlemaker Road. So this is Candlemaker Road, that's the, the setting of the excerpt from Jane just now. And just looking back over the route we've come up, the old town court, as you can see, it's very pretty. And I think it might. Look what I have in my bag. Goodness me, what do you have there, Gemma? Well, one of my favourites, actually. Um, a feline terrier dog, and this is Grace Bobby. And we'll just... We're, we're, let's go and meet the... the yeah. Um, and this is, of course, one of the traditional tourist draws. You, you often find quite a lot of um, Japanese tourists with their cameras around here. And this is Grey Fryer's Bobby. And we pat his nose for luck. Um, I think that he's, he's, he's loved for his, his loyalty. Yes. His so, qualities we like. Yeah. Loyalty. Would you say that you feel a sense of loyalty to Edinburgh um, in your writing and in kind of the work you do in the art scene? Sometimes can seem can seem cold and overly formal, but you get underneath mm -hmm. and you realise actually there is warmth here, and 
and that comes out through our culture, and we mm -hmm. our, our culture sort of reveals and flips back as yep. the personhood. It's, it's a mirror to our individual and perhaps yep. national identity too. And, and we've, we've, we've seen a real growing in confidence, I think, in Scotland, um, particularly mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, as we've explored themes about our place in, in the world. Um, yep. So yeah, it's a really exciting time to take yep. a small part in that. Yep. Um, and another well-loved children's classic is, of course, the Harry Potter books written by J.K. Rowling um, in Edinburgh and quite famously in a number of locations, but including the Elephant House. Oh, we well, you've, it's funny you should ask me that, Gemma. As we wander in, it is lovely and warm and goodness me. Who do we happen to see? Why? It's Alison Summers. <laughs> Hello. Um, Alison is a short story writer, an emerging writer in Edinburgh who's also just finished her debut novel. Um, and she teaches creative writing in the city and is just generally a lovely person enjoying some lovely looking chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, at the last book festival, which we we're just chatting about, um, Alison read one of her short stories at the story shop there. Um, what was the name of your story again? That's great, and I believe Sarah is going to tweet a link to that so you can hear Alison reading the story or read the text online um, if you're following us on Twitter. Um, anything you'd like to tell us about Edinburgh and the Book Festival, Alison? Well, the Edinburgh Book Festival is the best and biggest literary festival of its kind, and the author's work is Fantastic, thank you. And what's your favourite thing about being a writer in Edinburgh? Being surrounded by inspiration. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And we're going to leave Alison now and we're going to take you to the toilets. Oh, my legs crossed by the door. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, there's two reasons we're going to the toilets. Um, one is <laughs> as. Here. There's nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, one, one of them is Harry Potter. Now, you can see that the toilet walls here, I, I hope we're in the ladies, I think we're in the ladies, um, are absolutely covered in graffiti. And all of this graffiti is written by Harry Potter fans, um, saying things like, Dear J.K. Rowling, thank you for teaching the world that a silly little book in the hands of a silly little girl or boy can go a long way. You've defined a generation of dreams. I think every writer um, could come here and draw inspiration from the way in which um, this series of books has touched so many people's worlds. Yeah, and there's no naughty drawings. This is, <laughs> this is a good wall to focus on. Well done, Mickey. Let's go to the <laughs> toilets. <laughs> this is the most hygienic tour any of you will be taking We're on. We're not taking you to um, the, the, the infamous worst toilet in Scotland, as described in mm. Urban Welsh's train spotting. But shall we yeah. read to one of the, the, the excerpts from that book? Yep, that would be good. Um, Maybe just sums up again that stubborn mm. resistant love that we do have for Edinburgh inside, but yeah. um, you know, despite it all, so, this is basically the train spotting speaking in the first person. I remember walking along Princess Street, but um, we both hate walking along Princess Street, then by tourists and shoppers, twin curses of our capitalism. I looked up at the castle and thought, it's just another building to us. It registers in our heaps, just like British home stores with Virgin Records. We're heading to these places on a shop list this week. But when you come back out of the early station, you're being away for a bit, you think, hey, this is my bad. Yeah. And that actually means brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Understated thoughts. Yeah, so let's give you a quick visual tour of the inside of the Elephant House Cafe, which, as you can see, is a very nice place. Um, somewhere I like to come and write letters, actually. Ooh, lovely. Um, right, shall we? Letters, so, let's shall get we? Going. Yep. So yep. Uh, but one of the other reasons I wanted to bring you to the toilets in the Elephant House um, is a shout out to Rory McLeod, um, who commented on a, a blog post about this tour earlier, that um, back when he was a student in, I think, the 70s at Edinburgh University, it was the toilet walls um, in the university library and places like that, which were the Twitter and the Facebook of their day, with people leaving messages and writing what they thought were amusing quotes and essentially broadcasting that public yet anonymous side of themselves. 
and I just thought that was a really beautiful idea. What do you think about that, Gemma? Well, often um, words help us find our voice. If we feel, um, you know, inhibited to, to speak what we say, then, then we can do so through words. And that, that can be a very liberating mm -hmm. process, can't it? Maybe yeah. Some to that, um, of, of expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, look, we're coming up now yeah. to um, the libraries in George IV Bridge. Um, on the right-hand side, there's the National Library of Scotland. I love the, the old wooden panels in there. It's very evocative as well. I spent a lot of time living in there. And on the left, we've got the City Library. Yeah. Oh, we can also just show you. I mean, Edinburgh is a, a city of many layers, and here's one of them. You might have thought that we were walking at ground level. I think we're actually something like 13 stories up. Goodness. You'll have to come back sure. and see it at night. That's when I'm looking down into the belly of the grass market. And all, leading down into the cow all gate. Sorts of mischief happens. Yep. Yeah. Let's swivel around. I want to okay. see you now, to Vicky. Yeah. Whoop! There you are. Edinburgh <laughs> has many wonderful, wonderful libraries. Um, I would also like to say thank you to the Edinburgh Library Service for drawing our attention to the map of novels in Ooh. Edinburgh that we talked about. And I think um, hopefully Sarah can pop a link that up on the talk stream for those of you who missed that. Good idea. You're very well managed remembering to say thank you. <laughs> very well done. Um, and it's so wonderful. It's kind of based on, you know, based on Google Maps, I think. Um, apologies if I got that wrong. This is a live feed, evidently. So we're, <laughs> we'll we we'll follow up with some yeah, links afterwards. Um, and that literally maps out where the different novels um, written in or about Edinburgh appear on routes that ah, No, here, here we are on... Um, I'll swivel around so you can see. Hopefully, there you go. This is Victoria Street, one of the one of the prettiest streets in Edinburgh. Named after me, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, That's very modest. Okie dokes. <laughs> Cross over. What am I doing with your phone here, Vicky? Oh, you're over. pointing it at the door. Sorry. That's all right. Hi. Um, Victoria Street. Fire of the big shooting curve into the grass market. Yeah. Um, and we are heading on up to the crossroads of. The high street, that part of the Royal Mile, and um, the mound. Yep. Because, um, yeah, there's all those layers and yep. um, volcanoes um, one top of the other. And we've got at this crossroads, there's Parliament House, which is the, the original Scottish Parliament, and, this one. and now home to the closest session. Um, but the high, the high court was great, and there's quite a few lawyers turned writers. Um, that are, is Alexander McCall Smith one of them? Yes, he taught me actually. Did you? Ah, yeah, kind of that's nice. The first, um, uh, lady detective series came yeah. out, and he, he said, Whose birthday yeah. it is? And lots of cheeky hands went up, so it didn't really have a birthday to me. Yeah. Lovely man. But also before him, there Ooh, was um, Green Man. Stevenson. Yeah. Um, Walter Scott too, an advocate. So, and before we, we turn up to meet Christine, um, quite a famous view, isn't it? Very down famous view. Street. And if you were to continue down the street ahead of us, what would you come to, Gemma? Well, okay, proper. Um, right. Nicole! Oh, hey. I am it. April, I told you I'd get April. Right, hopefully, cool's gone. Dial Cecil, we've got um, Colbe, John Knox House, the Storytelling Centre, that's well with the lovely cafe in there. Yep. There's the Scottish Poetry Library, mm -hmm. um, and then eventually you get all the way down to Hollywood and present the Scottish Parliament. Lovely. Oh, it's Salter Society too, they do some great things. Yep. Um, yeah, it's all, all part of the continued enlightenment in Scotland. Right. Okay, and how the time? I do. Um, that is five to two. So actually, okay. we're, we're just on, nearing the very end of this, and yep. So we've got our, our final stop on the tour coming up. It's quite a special one, actually, isn't it? Yeah. We have this wonderful word in Scotland, matter, which means mm -hmm. to crack, crack words, to be a wordsmith. Mm -hmm. And our our own city's matter, the poet laureate, is currently Christine Melissa, and we're going to meet. And you're reading from one of her new poems. Yeah, that's special. Um, and she's she's obviously a very well-known um, writer in Scotland um, and internationally. 
But those of you who follow the, the Scottish referendum closely may remember Christine from her poem, which was published by, I think, Scottish Book Trust um, on the morning of the results. Oh, yeah. Uh, which was a, a beautiful ode to, to reconciliation and thought, I would say. Good morning, Christine. So, hello, Christine. Hello. Welcome to the tour. Hello. hello. Lovely to meet you. Yeah, you as well. <laughs> um, and, Christine, can you tell us a little something about your role as the Makar and kind of the Makar Scott? Just kind of a very quick. Okay. Well, uh, Macca's Court is, as you can see, quite an old part of Edinburgh, and this is Lady Steyr's house, um, and it's, it's owned by the local council, and it's the Writers' Museum, and it celebrates the life of Burns, Dickinson, and uh, Sir Walter Scott, two of our very important Scottish writers. And that's quite a, a good thing. And also, you'll see in the stones, there are... Um, quotations from some of our famous writers. There's Ian Crichton mm -hmm. Smith, who died just at the end of last century. Let our three-voiced country sing in the new world. He was a, a lovely poet. Um, and so there's quite a lot of stories representing yeah. some of our... And you're originally from Shetland. I am, yes. I lived at home uh, in Edmonton for 40 years. So it's Shetland in my blood and bone. And I write in the Shetland tongue as well as English. Lovely. And I believe you have a poem about Edinburgh for us. I do. And I put up there is just a nice, simple, short one, which is kind of about my changing relationship with Edinburgh. When I came as a young student, I was really quite... Um, well, it was a different city, and I was young and rural. Um, mm -hmm. It was quite aloof and standoffish. So I've written a, a, a love poem to Edinburgh now, um, now I'm grown up. <laughs> so shall I just read it to you? Yes, please. To Edinburgh's man. Getting to know you. It was never love at first sight. Though my heart skipped a beat, your fingertips, skyline and stroke, your crisp couture, the cut, the allure, just a hint of the real. But there was something reserved, resistant, honesty, that divine spark, your self assurance, respect, perhaps, that made me keep my distance. We took our time getting intimate, lowering our defences bit by bit. I've all but forgotten that coldness, the standoffishness you cultivated, a particular view of refinement. We're still falling for one another. You've opened your arms. I've opened my eyes. You're under my skin now. I defend you against all comers. That was lovely. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Thank and you. we're just going to sign off very quickly before Connor tells us off for going over time. Ah, thank you so much for joining us on this mm -hmm. Whistle Stop tour. It's been such yep. a pleasure, and we hope to welcome mm -hmm. you in person to Edinburgh one day. And enjoy the rest of the Digital Writers Festival, and a big hello to everybody else doing the 20 Minute Cities tour. Yes, happy uh, writing. We're looking forward to watching yours. Happy reading. Yep. Over and out you. from us. Bye. Bye bye.